All right, welcome back to the Crave YouTube channel. And today I'm gonna to be discussing just a little bit about landing patterns. So in a recent episode uh, of the Crave Show, the podcast that Jay Russ and I do together, we were discussing landing patterns. And we were talking about how uh, sometimes you might wanna to wait to set the direction of landing until you're actually landing. So the first person into the landing pattern would set which direction. And we had a comment on that episode from a couple of people, a couple of different comments. People were a little bit confused about what we were saying, what we were trying to communicate. And one of the comments was a newer, younger jumper, and they were saying, hey, it sounds like you guys are saying that sometimes you don't need to have a landing pattern. And they said, you know, I'm kind of confused. Why would you not want to have a landing pattern? Wouldn't that create confusion? Wouldn't that make it more dangerous if people don't know how they're supposed to land and what the pattern is and all that stuff. And yes, that is absolutely true. You do need to have a landing pattern, but let, let's differentiate real quick between a landing pattern and then the, the direction of your final approach. So your final approach is part of that pattern. So most drop zones are going to operate off of a very simple landing pattern, which is a downwind, crosswind and then final that is the the basic the three basic parts of the pattern how it might change is some drop zones are going to say we only make left hand turns so your downwind would of course be downwind and then you would have to make a left hand turn to get on your crosswind and then you'd make another left hand turn to get onto your final so that would be the pattern left hand turns only or some drop zones say right hand turns only. So downwind, right turn to crosswind, right turn to final. That's the pattern. So what J. Russ and I were, what we were discussing and we were talking about was not that you get rid of the pattern. The drop zone is gonna have a set pattern and that's what it is, it's always the same. Uh, for example, my home drop zone, Spaceland San Marcos, it's left hand turns only. What we were talking about is that is waiting to set that final direction, the, the direction of the final leg, the, the final approach. So that means um, you, you're still going to do the left-hand turns, but where you start that pattern is going to be different so that your, la your final will be into the wind. And the reason we were saying that is because some drop zones experience variable winds throughout the day, and, and, the, and the winds will even shift directions throughout the day. So if you're jumping at a place like Sebastian or Oceanside, somewhere that's very near the water, very near the beach, the prevailing winds are gonna be pretty consistent out of a specific direction off of the water, right? Like you're, you're pretty much always gonna have wind coming off the ocean, so that direction is pretty consistent. Now I know there will be time to time when those winds shift and things are different, but for the most part, that's gonna be, that's gonna be where the winds are coming from. So your final, approach is always going to be into the wind, most likely going to always be that direction. So in Sebastian, it's almost always to the east, I guess. Um, and, and that's awesome. That's great. But for drop zones that experience a change and a shift in winds throughout the day, sometimes that can create a problem, especially for younger, less experienced jumpers and, and, and for jumpers who are on bigger canopies. So just imagine for a minute, we're in the loading area, and the winds are coming out of the north. And we say, okay, you know, the winds are coming out of the north. That means we're going to be landing to the north. Final approach, our final approach is going to be to the north into the wind. And we decide that in the landing area. We all get on the plane. We take off. And in the, you know, 12 minutes that it takes us to get to altitude, let's say that the winds have shifted direction. Now the winds are no longer coming out of the north. Now they're coming out of the west. Okay. So if we stay with that original plan, we can do that. And for, for people who are more experienced, people who are um, maybe on a, a little bit more um, maneuverable canopy that has a little bit more controllability, that might be okay, especially if the winds aren't very strong. But what's gonna happen is when we all come down, everybody's gonna set up to land to the north. And so that final approach will be to the north, but the winds are coming out of the west. So that final approach is gonna be a crosswind landing. Like I said, more experienced jumpers, if it's not a strong wind, that might be okay. People can, can deal with that stuff. But for younger jumpers, student jumpers, or less experienced and bigger canopies, 
Now that crosswind landing, that, that could be very problematic. It could, it could be dangerous, very dangerous. So what Jay Russ and I were talking about is that in, in some drop zones that experience those changes in winds throughout the day, sometimes what we will do is say, okay, in the loading area, we will acknowledge, look, right now the wind is coming out of the north. So most likely the, the landing is going to be to the north, but everyone be aware, pay attention to, and, and we try to figure out in the landing area, who's going to be the first one down? Who's going to be the first person into the pattern? And usually you can figure that out based on exit order and wing loading. We know, okay, this guy, so-and-so is in the first group exiting. He's got a really small canopy. He's got a high wing loading. He's going to be the first one in the pattern. If the winds have changed, he's going to set the new direction of landing. So the pattern will still be the same. It'll still be left-hand turns, but that final approach will, that way we can guarantee that that final approach is into the wind. That makes it safer for everyone. And um, we only have one person that's making that decision, that change, they're in charge, and we all know that we're following that person. So that's what we were discussing in that episode, specifically about landing patterns and setting that, that landing pattern. Um, or, or how you might make those changes throughout the day at a drop zone that experiences changes in wind direction throughout the day. Uh, I hope that's helpful. I hope that clarifies some things. And uh, if you have other thoughts or comments about why maybe there's a better practice, maybe there's something you guys do at your drop zone that works even better, or some reason that you think what we're discussing, what I'm talking about might not be safe. We want to hear that stuff. The whole point of, of Crave, this channel, the content that we put out is so that we can all be better skydivers, that we can all be safer, and we can help one another uh, have a good time in the sky. So leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you've got any other ideas, we'd love to hear it. Get out there in the sky, jump out of an airplane with your friends, and have some fun. Crave, do more, be better. <laughs>